Friday. Yes, yes, yes. And it's, a, it's been a fine week in the name of sports. A lot has been happening and we're here to update you all. Of course, I am your host, Ogowe Eddie. And joining me on set is none other than my analyst, Shafi Zele. Yes, Shafi will be also with us today to help us break down each and everything. Mm -hmm. Shafi, how are you? I'm fine. How's your week been? Sporty me kuaje kuaku. Ah, me kuanzuri, me kuanzuri. Sana. Me mokfrai shaka bisha. Kuanzia juma juma pili. Ah, hadi leo. Bado kuna mchezo ban. Leo kuna napo kuna napoli. Don't me oh, don't me get climax. Ba leo si climax. Kesho pia kuna games za EPL. Sunday kuna akuna pumzika. Siku nzuri, wiki nzuri sana. Well, so much for sports and we're here to break it down for you for those who don't know much about it. And uh, to begin with, we want to begin with the story of uh, Kosuke. Bridget Kosuke has made us proud, although it's not as we expected, but then again, we are all but proud. Now, Ethiopian Ababel Berihani is the new world half marathon record holder. Ababel today lowered the previous record held by Kenya Jocelyn Kosuke by 20 seconds in Ras Al Kamani, half marathon in United Arab Emirates Arab. Kosuke the pre-face favorite was second after also dipping inside Chepkoske older world record time of one hour, four minutes and 49 seconds. Another Kenyan, Rosemary Wanjiru, who was making her debut over the distance, finished third after clocking a personal best time of one hour, five minutes and 34 seconds. It was Kenya's affair, it was a Kenyan affair in the men's category as Kibwot Candid ran brilliant race to win a personal best of 58 minutes and 58 seconds. Alexander Motiso was second in 59, 59 and 16, while Ethiopia Mule Muhisia was settled for third place in the 59 and 47 seconds. Wow, this, this, is, this is quite inspiring. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm a, bit, a bit disappointed that mm -hmm. Chep Koske, uh, I mean, uh, that Koske didn't, uh, didn't make it for fast, but it's been her first race ever since uh, last year. Mm -hmm. She's been out of the tracks for a while. Yeah, yeah this is a fast race. So, Evie Venyame Rudi, uh, do you think this is disappointing, Ama? This is a good show to show that uh, she's back and uh, she's preparing well. For us, in Indonesia, Kwamba ni mzuri amerudi amerudi na nguvu. Lakini najua kwa 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 mwenye we ana Kwamba amerudi chini. Yeye amekuwa ni 2019, 2018 World Champion pale kwa championship vile vile amekuwa ni record holder katika London Marathon. Sasa sidani kama kwa 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 personally anaona Kwamba pengine sio sio matokeo mazuri. Lakini kwa Kwa ile nini, kwa ile, kwa sisi wa Kenya, nina li matokeo mazuri, ya mimazo wa pili, sawa. Lakini kwa ke personally, si matokeo mazuri. Ye, ni muta mezoya kupata ile kuwa nambari moja, nambari one kila siku. Amekuwa, amekuwa na ile record, wild record holder, katika London Marathon. Na hii, saa hii, aa, kwa ke, si mzuri. Well, Joel Davis has just joined us, and uh, this is actually making room for a better conversation. Now, Joel, uh, we were talking about uh, Chep Kus uh, I mean, uh, Bridget Kosge, uh, finishing second uh, today in the in the in the in the, in the marathon race that uh, she she ran and uh, uh shafi here is telling us that it was really disappointing for her to finish second uh, she could have done better but my perspective is uh she this is a fast race ever since last year she's been out on the tracks for a while so you as uh, as per your, your your opinion do you feel that this was a disappointing run or do you think it's it's a good show considering the fact that it's a fast race ever since the year began okay for me i say it's not a disappointment because if you have been out for that long and you are coming back and you are getting position two, it shows that you are still have something to offer. So for me, I feel like now position two, maybe after two or three more months of training, then you'll be back to its normal. So for me, I see like it is just a good step towards where it's supposed to be. Well, I always like it when my analysts don't agree because it gives in for a better conversation. Normally it takes longer, so this time I'm just going to cut it short for a while. But then again, hey... Every day is a good day to argue. Now, <laughs> personally, I think it's a good show. And uh, we are hoping that she does well because I believe that this is her preparing for the London Marathon, which will better yet prepare her for the Olympics. So for me, I think uh, this is a good show. And I hope, I just hope that it, it does progress better as she goes on in, uh, in, in London. Or uh, do you feel that there's a, there's a way, Vitus is quite different? Lakini, alivujituma, nisi yoni kama kutakuwa vitu different. Nuna kwamba, atajituma zaidi. Kwa sababu mazo wa pili ya mejua yule mwe ya nampinga nani, mpinga mizi wake nani. Nimekuambia kwa wa Kenya, nuna nisawa. Lakini kwa ke mwenyewe, na vile world record holder, 
ana si vizuri sana. Oh so uko kwa Kenya tunashukuru lakini <laughs> eh, anafaa anafa kukutia bidii. <laughs> yeah, anafa bidii. Okay. Shafi tumekupata kweli tumekufuata. Tujakukosa hapo mali unaelekea. Now moving on to the next story. Now this one makes in for a really 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 interesting story and this shows that hard work does actually truly pay eventually. Now Kenya International Signs for Besiktas. Harambe Stalets forward Esik Akida has joined Turkish Giants Besiktas for a two year deal. Akida, who was part of the Starlet squad that made history when they qualified for the 2016 Women African Cup of Nations, put pen to paper on Monday afternoon after a successful trial. The deal came 12 months after one year deal with Israel based club Ramat Hashum came to an end. Besiktas is currently sec uh, second in the 12th team league, 36 points ahead, a point behind league leaders ALG Spo. You know what, Eddie? When you perform well, Eh, timu zingine zinakuona kucheza kwa utuzo hapana ukiperform tu vizuri nakwambia <laughs> ukifanya uki tu kitu yako vizuri bila kuangalia bila kuangalia nani ananiangalia unafanya tu personally vizuri at a personal level personal best una, una, una timu zingine zinakuangalia ma watu watu wengine wanakuangalia uwezi jua hata side unavyofanya show uwezi jua nani anakuangalia unapata ukitoka hapa mtu anakuitia kitu fulani kitu kubwa so akida amecheza vizuri ina, ina kwa nini nimesema hilo harambe stars wale wanauma harambe stars sio kwamba wanacheza tu nyumbani na sio kwamba nyumbani ndio wameumbwa wame, kucheza pale nyumbani hapana wao wafanye bidii kama wale harambe stars angalia david ouma ametajwa mpaka nje harambe stars harambe stars kwenda kucheza ile nini yao pa, uko, kule takish vizuri sana harambe stars kukopi ama kufuata ile unyayo za harambe stars well well uh, this uh, me eh, hmm. joel uh, this this actually makes it for a very very interesting conversation. Now me personally, I'm happy. And last year we were here together when we discussed about so many times we, we talked about starlets. In fact, with you, and I, I remember in some of our conversations, Tuliongelele Venye wamefanya vizuri despite the challenges that we're gonna face. Some of them being financial, some of them being well, well they had different challenges. So for them to actually come to a point where they are being recognized with the other teams, it, it does show that something is working out right, right? Okay. Yeah, sure. One thing I, I should tell people is that. Outside there, outside, let me say in Europe, there is so many teams that are looking into African for talent. The only thing is they are not, we are not exposed to what Europe wants here. So, but scouts can come from Europe to Kenya or to Nigeria or any other country in Africa, just like that to look for, for, for players. They have to perform at a certain level where people can see them, but people are hungry for talent. As long as you put any performance beyond par, Everybody will like want you, want you, because so many people are hungry outside there wanting to send this players here. So in regards to what you're saying, one thing I have actually noticed that it's there is a very big need for managers and uh, and and, uh, and scouts and, and scouts agents. and agents. Yes, With the, that's one thing that Africa is really lacking because it's it's the one way that you, you'll be exposed out there while still playing in 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 Africa, right? Yes. Okay. Well, okay. Confidence is fifty percent victory. While you're just like you're not going to confidence, come on, always. Okay, okay. So uh, it's not just confidence and uh, it's not just all about them. It's also the need of agents and scouts and of course managers. That's the only way or one of the best ways to actually make your football go out there. Now still on Starlets, Harambe Starlets provisional squad for a Turkish Women Cup has been named. Now Harambe Starlets head coach David Ouma has released a provisional squad for the Turkish Women Cup scheduled for, to run from Monday, March 2nd to Wednesday, March 11th, 2002. The, co the call-up largely features players who did the country proud in the Sekafa Championship game last year in which they emerged as champions. Coach Ouma is expected to trim the squad to a final list of 21 a few days before the team jets out to Turkey on Monday. The team is expected to hit camp on February 23rd, 2020 in Nairobi as local friendly matches has been lined up on Friday, February 28th, 2020. Now we do have a video to actually play for you. So the TC take over. For us, as a, as think, uh, at this moment, um, uh, uh, for us as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a nation to participate at the uh, Turkish Women's Cup, I think it shows the seriousness uh, with which now, if you look at uh, the little goals that the Federation is putting to be the best member association across the world. And of course, you know, uh, Kenya being a, a sportive nation is, is really on the world, on the world map. And this is where, at this moment, uh, we are pushing as the as the women for the women football, because if you look uh, 
currently where we are ranked at 133 position uh, and and you look and we would like to be at uh, the world cup we've got to play the top rank coach david Oma highlighting us on what's going on now you guys there's something i've actually really noticed i think it's, it's about time that people started uh, just acknowledging just how much stylists have achieved to this point. I mean, there are a lot of things that these, these ladies have done. To get where they are today, it's not been easy. It's been a big struggle. But one thing that I actually acknowledge and really, really commend them is the fact that they did not let the struggles that they are going through affect their play in field. But you guys can share more about what you think about stylists to this point. Okay, for me, it's a, they decided to give their best regardless of the lack of allowance, lack of food, lack of better sleeping facilities. They decided to, to oversee all those challenges and give their best. Then going to, to Turkey, it's not, like I can tell you, it's not about the trophy, they're going to play the matches, they're going to play. It's the exposure that they're going to see. You know, if you go there, you see their changing room, you see their death, you see their trainers, you see everything about there. And you come back to Kenya and you see the condition that you are coming from and going there. So you'll find everything that you are going there is basically going to, to benchmark what is happening there. And you get exposed to their life, and then you have that determination of going to play in Europe. Because you have seen everything about Europe, everything, they are, they are where they sleep, everything. Then you come back to your condition in Kenya. You will do each and everything to get yourself out of this Kenya to go play in Europe. So for me, it's more like exposure and to give them that mindset that if you work hard, you will eventually go there. So this is an opportunity to, uh, for them to actually showcase their talent for the, someone who is there and watching and needs a player of their caliber. This is a, this is a, this is a window for, so, for people to see them, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I love Pia, you le David Ouma, coach wa, wa Harambe Stalit. Yes. Anafaa sana kupatiwa, kupigiwa makofi ama kupatiwa kongole. Kwa sababu David Ouma amejituma, ametoka na ule wa sena kila mahali, kwa kila hali. Wakilela chini sakafuni, wako nao. Wale vijana wa milela chini sakafuni, wakienda kule nje, wanapiga watu. Wana lela chini, wanapiga watu. Inamanisha kwamba David Ouma na vijana wake, wanajituma sana. Na serikali, ka, kando na kuwa na watenga sana, ama wamekuwa kwa watenga, lazima sasa, alivosema Amina Mohamed kwamba kwa sasa watakuwa naangaliwa zaidi wale vijana wa Harambe Starlet inapendeza sana kama wataenda kule tak, taki basi na natamani sana alivosema Amina Mohamed azidi ku ile ile promise yake iwe iwe fulfilled well, so much commendation for, to David Oma and, and we are really proud of the work that he is doing and I hope, I really, really hope that he continues that way and even more. We would really like to see Stylets even go further and further and the ladies be called in better teams. Now, speaking of coaches who are still getting commendation, Muyoti has been named as January Coach of the Month. Yes, Kakamega Homeboys coach Nicholas Muyoti was on Tuesday named January Fidelity Insurance Coach of the Month. Now, during the month of January, Homeboys won all their four matches and scored nine goals. They thrashed, <laughs> threatened Kisumu All-Stars 4-0, beat Zuke Richo 1-0 before pronouncing defending champions Gomaria 2-1 at Bukongo Stadium. They completed the excellent month with a 2-1 win over Karyobangi Sharks. It's the first coaching accol accolade won by the former AFC Leopard midfielder Muyoti takes home 75,000 as personalized trophy for the achievement. Now, I, we have to really commend it. It's yeah. been a fine job. He, he, ku, ku, ku. To win all these games and you can look at the teams that he's been playing with. Now to play, to, to, to take points from Gormaia and take them from Karibangi Sharks, it's not easy. So for, for, for him to actually do that and right now uh, homeboys are, are, are third, I believe they're third in the league and they are like uh, 41 points, a bit, uh, four points behind uh, Gormaia. Yeah. So, so this, this is good work, this, I, I believe he deserves it. And, and Muyoti. Uyu umioti, vile vile ukimuangalia, ukitea kujua alifanya kazi gani, ungeangalia ile mechi yao dhidi ya Gormahia. Yeah. Muyoti alituma sana vijana wake. Muyoti kazi yake liunekana sana kwa yo game. Mine zasema, kwa mechi zote ambu nimeziona za, za homeboys, Muyoti mechi kubwa sana mba mekwa nayo ni ya, kakame, ya Gormahia. Na vile vile usisahu kwamba wale Gormahia walikuwa ki, waki wa, kwa mitandao, walikuwa kwa skuma skuma sana vijana wa homeboys wakiwa tukana wakirushana rushana rushana maneno <laughs> wakisema kwamba hauta tushinda hao nasema tutashinda well that's another match in Egypt so it's of course expected <laughs> but uh she, the Joel, what, what do you have to say about this okay for me I'll say when even you see the nomination I'll stand out to any other person when you are compete na to the January January award of the best manager for me it's all about the work you put in if you put in a lot of work if you give your best you'll be recognized so 
ana challenge ana competition it was clean for him clean win and he's like yeah commentable well, good luck to Muyoti and we really hope the best for him as well. Now, Gormaya may have had a bad record against homeboys in January, but they did well this week as the Gormaya triumphed over Naivas in the FKF Betway Cup round of 32 action. Now, Gormaya twice came from behind to beat Naivas 3-2, setting up a date with Postal Rangers in the round of 16, the FKF Betway Cup. The match was played on Sunday, February 16, 2000. Of course, this week <laughs> in Kasarani. Goals from Dixon Abondo, 40th minute, and Lawrence Juma, 69th minute, and Boniface Omondi deep into the stoppage time were enough to cancel Kingsley Award and Rashid Hassan first half goals. Bandari, Ulinzi Stars, KCB, AFC Lopez, and Kariobangi Sharks also booked a place in the tournament's round of 16. The tournament winner takes home. 2 million Kenya shillings while runners up pocket 1 million in the third place will be and fourth place teams will take home 750 and 500 respectively that is 1000 yes 500000 have, have you noticed something about nini uh, fkf your betway na kpl we notice kitu well well uh, well th that's why you are here as an analyst kutoa hiyo kitu nyume notice vijana wanajituma sana katika pale FKF hiyo 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 championship mm. ambayo ni championship yetu sasa kama yeah. FA yetu kushinda KPL leo leo ilikuwa jana KPL imesema kwamba hawana pesa ya kumtuza eh, ambaye atashinda ligi inama ah. alafu hapa huku kwa championship kwa sasa kwa hii FA yetu hii ambayo ni FKF hii kuna 2 million prize inamaanisha kwamba vijana wanajituma sana kwa hii 2 million kushinda kukimbilia ile kikombe KPL imesema kwamba uh, bado Ye, bado ile so, shirikisho alina fedha za kutosha kumpatia kupatia na prize kwa atakayeshinda ligi sasa iki tu si wange nyama za tunaomba kwa marize ligi alafu ndo wasi <laughs> imaribu sana mchezo okay, please, Joel, please enlighten I've, us I've been, I've been watching these two leagues i tend to believe there's a lot of good organization in the in the second division which is the fkl there's a lot of organization there's a lot of sponsorship Unapata huko kuna sponsorship kuna so many good let me say kuna kuna mwelekeo but ukikuja kwa KPL there's a lot of corruption there's a lot of bad management so hata ukipata size like i can say most of the companies in Europe they are trying as much as possible to work with then the second the second leg in Kenya but not the first leg mm -hmm. because liko naongea na some of these companies so wanaambia the one challenge with this major league is most of the players are old <laughs> no, we don't have to go Maybe to do scouting, or to to the, to do these big players, these big clubs. So, but all players are all above 25, 26. You can take them to Europe. But if you target this second league, to put players are young, 18, 17. So this is where the future is. This is the potential talent. This is the potential where you can sign players. So I tend to believe. Say, so attention, mingi na kwa focus to the second league in Kenya. I don't know why, but I just feel kuna more attention there. Well, let's not take so much attention away from the FKF uh, bet to a cup of round of 32 because a lot did happen that day and Gormaya coming 2-0 down and winning it, uh, I mean, coming down twice and uh, we ending up winning it, it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't really easy. Now, I, I, I do agree to the extent that, um, well, of course, Wakisema Premier League in a person, it does reason with logic because yeah, rent lazima ilipwe, school fees lazima zilipwe, our chazaji pia ni binadamu tu kama sisi wako na majukumu kama sisi. So, au pia, wamefuwa kwele seme yu wanajihisi ni kama yani pia, yani maitaji yao lazima pia atimizi, wanelewa? Yeah. Eh, so, always uwa laumu, lakini pia, it's it's about time. I, I believe it is it is really about time that someone actually did take this issue of uh, Premier League lacking finance seriously. But umwana, who will do that? Kama Adisai bado tunabishana na elections za FKF. Umwana uh, FC Leopard kisumbukana 400k. Acha tu. It is na masai butu ya zidi. Ya zidi na ya zidi kabisa. Anyway, it was a very interesting week in international. This week, Kend, we do have also uh, the Premier League that is yet to be played. But let's start with the Kenyan Premier League that we have a fixture for you with the teams that are yet to play this weekend. Now, of course, uh, these were the games were played uh, last. Uh, this was Bandari uh, versus Kakamega Hombo. It was a 1-1. One -one. Wazito went 2-1 against Wilson Steamer. Chemilil 2-1 against Postal Rangers. AFC Leopards went, uh, lost to Tasca 1-0. And... Uh, Zoya Sugar also uh, drew 1-1 one, one with uh, Ulinzi Stars Mother United won 3 nil against Zuke Richo and Sofapaka beat Gormai at 3-1. This was on Saturday 8th. This was the last game that were played 
uh, in the Premier League. Uh, it was it's been a, it's been a while since this guys played. Okay, FC Leopards uh, versus Tasca. It was one 0 FC lost. And then uh, this week, of course, we'll be having Bandari versus Madari United. Will be playing tomorrow. Western Steamer versus Kariubangi Sharks also will be playing tomorrow. And uh, we have uh, Postal Rangers versus KSB will be playing tomorrow. AFC Lopa will be welcoming Sofa Paka, who last beat uh, Gormaria 3-1. Now, moving on, on Sunday, we have Olinzi Stars versus Kisumu All-Stars, Tasca versus Wazito, and then Kakamega Homeboys versus Chamel Sugar, Zuke Richo versus Gorma here, and then Shon Sony Sugar versus Nzoya Sugar. Now, guys, in we of, of all these games, which one do you think will be the biggest game of the weekend? Is it Sofa Paka versus AFC Lopa or Bandari versus Madari United? AFC Leopards versus Sofa Park. AFC Leopards versus Sofa Park. Yeah. So, uh, Joel? I, I, I go for the same FC versus Sofa Park. AFC versus Sofa Park. Now, yes. well, that would be a very interesting. It, it is the Blues against the Blues. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Paka versus. Uh, Paka na Paka, Paka, na Paka. <laughs> see what I mean, Paka. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it. Uh, let's let's wait and see, and how, how will, it will all turn out. Now, moving on to the EPL. Last games that were played, Everton played against Crystal Palace, and they won three one. Sheffield played against Bournemouth, and they won two one. And then Southampton were lost one 0 against Burnley. When uh, Bright, Brighton lost, uh, oh, drew 1 1 with Watford, Wolves drew 0 0 with Leicester, Norwich City versus Liverpool, Norwich lost 1 0. And this one was a very interesting match if you guys really watch it. Actually, where Norwich did put out a fight, a real fight against uh, Liverpool. It, most people say that Liverpool were lucky, but then again, yeah, who's Liverpool, to say? Liverpool. <laughs> 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 oh, VR. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> VR played a part in that one, and there's a little bit a lot of complaints about against VR. But then again, uh, moving on to this weekend, we do have interesting matches to be played. Chelsea will be facing out Tottenham. I think this will be the weekend game of the eight or game of the weekend. Like that one and Man City versus Leicester. Those Man City versus Leicester. Now, of course, we have Burnley versus uh, Bournemouth tomorrow. Southampton versus Aston Villa tomorrow, and then we have Crystal Palace versus Newcastle. And Sheffield United will be welcoming Brighton. Leicester City will also be welcoming coming Manchester City and on Sunday we do have Wolves versus Manchester City, Arsenal versus Everton, Manchester United versus what for the Liverpool versus West Ham United. Now guys, tell me which one of these matches okay, Tanzania Chelsea versus Tottenham. Mm -hmm. Which one do you think will take it home? Chelsea because they're playing at home. They're playing at home. But Chelsea haven't been that consistent at home this season. I mean, yeah, or at a pocket to prove like uh, home is the best place for them. Okay, I think Chelsea are poor at the moment, but Spurs are worse because Spurs work on so many injuries. They don't have their formation. And Mourinho is guessing things um, again. Yeah, yeah. Lafu, they played over the weekend on Wednesday and they were outplayed. So there's a lot of energy that they used in their game. True. So coming on Saturday, which is like two days, only two days of rest. Chelsea and they're back here. Yeah. So I think Chelsea Okay, Shafi, I want you to give me this one of Leicester versus Manchester City. Oh, yes, Manchester City. Manchester City. Yeah, do you, Why do you think Manchester City is going to be Leicester? Now, this one I actually want him to respond because he's a serious Leicester City fan. But okay, um, finish with what you're saying. Manchester City, when you have a lot of people who are in the world, they are in the world, they are Champions League, they are in the world, they are in the Bad or the Vizuri. Me and Manchester City. Uh, Joel. Okay, for me, I'll go with Leicester because. <laughs> cause Manchester... Not because you're a fan, but because. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Definitely, I'm pulling to towards my side. But the fact is, Man City are going to play Champions League on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So they are going to play this game with one eye into the Champions League. They have to at least rest some players because they are going to play in San Diego Banabu in Spain. So if they play all their players here and they get tired and they go to Banabu, they say chance they will lose. <coughs> Second thing, Manchester City have already secured their top four position. And going to Madrid is the only trophy they won. And they are not sure if they are even going to play Champions League next yeah, season. Yeah, so they love to... They might as well win it this season. Yeah, so they love <laughs> to do everything for the other game and leave Leicester to win 3 nil. Well, let's, all wait. let's wait and see what will happen this weekend. Of course, these guys do not agree on their results. But if I was to say mine, I would say, well, let me preserve it for next week. <laughs> <laughs> but I would be looking forward to the Arsenal versus Everton camp because these are two coaches who have not been in the Premier League uh, as coach for a while. And uh, now they're going to meet each other. And it's all about the efforts that they have made ever since they stepped in as head coaches. Now, from us to you, of course, it's goodbye. But just as a reminder... Y254 will be showing the FA Cup on the 3rd and 4th as Tottenham face Norwich and West Brom face Newcastle. So I hope you guys will be tuned and of course we will not disappoint you as usual. Now from us to you is goodbye. Joining me on set has always been Joel, Joel Davis who has been with us throughout and Shafi Zele. I am your host Eddie Ogoe and it go ahead in.